I go out and shoot, I like to keep at my settings in a range where I don't have to play around with my camera a lot. I want to spend all my time seeing the streets. I want to spend time looking for what's coming my way, you know, setting up my shots and not with my head down fumbling around with my camera. Know the neighborhood you're shooting in. Um, knowledge is definitely power when you go out in the streets. And some of the neighborhoods that I shoot in, if you go in there clueless, you're going to either come out with a problem or you're going to come out with nothing to look at at the end of the day. But you want to know things like the demographics, the history behind the neighborhood, um, what the crime is like there. And I've found that things like that, when I can go into a neighborhood and feel like I belong there, it helps you get better shots. Um, History-wise, when we go out in the streets, you want to tell a story. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I find in my work is I want people to be transported to that neighborhood. When they look at my work, I want them to feel like they were there and really making an experience. And the way that you do that is by knowing about where you're shooting. If you know the history about behind a neighborhood, um, New York City is constantly changing. And every time I go out, I want to capture that feel of, you know, where was the neighborhood? Where's the neighborhood going? Where is it at right now? You know, we look at our pictures and our pictures are history. For any of you who are beginners and you want to go out and you don't have that comfortability factor, use the telephoto. What that does is it slowly breaks you in to seeing things on the street. You know, capture things from afar. Um, when you use a telephoto, you're obviously looking different. You're looking a block ahead instead of right in front of you. This right here is a candid shot from the one train. And I shot this one from the hip. I find myself from time to time, if I'm in tight quarters or, you know, there's no better way to take a candid shot than to just shoot it from your hip like that. And I kind of lucked out on this one. Um, I was riding the train with my wife. I looked over and I saw four different women holding the same subway pole. There were four different nationalities, all the same gender, four different age groups. It was immediately a powerful shot to me. I mean, it, that's what New York is. New York is a melting pot. And I couldn't obviously walk up to them and say, hey, can you ladies just hold your hands there? And you know, there's certain opportunities like this where you just have to grab it and you have to be quick. You know? I have almost an obsession with timeless photography. Like I said, I love old New York photos. I love New York old, uh, old New York subway photos. I looked at this photo and I'm like, wow, you can't even tell what era this is. This could be from the 80s. This could be from the 70s. This could be from the 90s. And lo and behold, it's from 2050. But there are things that I use guidelines. And one of my guidelines is New York City is not a uh, safari. Don't treat it like one. I was out shooting in Harlem one time, and I ended up talking to this guy. He had a real interesting look. I loved the way he was dressed. I loved his hair. And I stopped him. I was like, you know, you have a real interesting look. And I, I, I eventually ended up taking a picture of the guy. And one of the things that stuck with me is he said, you know what, man? He's like, I really appreciate the fact that you had an actual conversation, that you engaged me, and you didn't just come up and either take a picture of me or come up and just ask to take a picture of me right away. He's like, you know, you kind of, you listened to what I had to say, you got to know me. And he said, a lot of times I see people come into the neighborhood and it's like it's the zoo. And people are just here to take pictures of the animals. And it was such a powerful thing that he said. And I'm like, you know what, it's right. This shot here, I actually shot last week. Um, I was out shooting with some friends, and I ran between two street meat carts to get this shot, um, shot it candidly. And this is something that I see as, it's a powerful image to me, where you know, I wanted to capture it. Um, for, for those who want to know, I did shoot it with my $50 telephoto lens. Um, and the reason I did do that is, when I was composing the picture in my head, you know, if you shoot it from a wide angle, it kind of spaces everything out. And as you know, the technical aspect behind a telephoto lens, it compresses everything. I wanted to bring all that action that was happening around him and really compress the photo so that you really, it really hit strong that here you have this guy begging for money and his feet are up in the air and he's, he's uncomfortable in his poverty. And you have all these people just walking by. You had tourists and people on their way to work and really not giving a care about that. Moving to children now. Um, this is one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. You know, so I was like, hey man, I love your shirt. And he kind of smiled and laughed and his father laughed. And I was like, you know, so I kind of stopped him. I was like, you know, I was like, you know, I'm a photographer. I was like, so I have to ask, you know, do I get, you know, a special pass? Do I get to take a picture of you? And he's just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> so I had his father step aside and, you know, that 
face that's captured, it was just kind of like how the whole experience was. He was just kind of like, all right, cool, whatever, man. And, and it's stuck. You know, again, you see that timeless nature where you look at this photo and it could be, you know, any time over the last 30 years. Now, I'm very big on doing things in camera and not creating what I call post effects. You know, I think the shot itself should be interesting. You should look for interesting moments and look to create interesting photos and not manufacture them in post-processing. Um, and something that stuck out with this was you have a clear social exchange with the globe behind it. So it's like you can kind of start turning the gears. And you're like, wow, it says something on a bigger plane. And it really was just two skateboarders saying goodbye. But the fact that they're in front of a globe and it's you have like a rim lighting. If you see the guy there on the right, it's more prominent, the rim lighting behind him from the, uh, the street light. And it just really, it was an image that, as soon as I saw it from walking up, had to have it. And I wanted to make sure that it was composed properly. I just caught that perfect stream of light. Um, it just creates interest where there's no question where your eye goes in this one. So lighting, you know, that stark contrast creates very interesting photos. Cropping. This photo, uncropped, it's not as interesting, to put it just bluntly. Again, the, uh, the original shot of this, you have a lot of the roof, you have some lights up there. It kind of distracts you from the madness. I think when you tightly crop this, it really brings the focus into the people. This was a girl swinging. Um, I captured this through a black iron fence. You know, instead of just taking a picture of a girl on a swing, I tried to make it interesting. I tried to make it you know, something, I, I tried to add something to the shot that most people wouldn't walk by and do. And it was very difficult, it took a couple tries, but, you know, I'm not completely, you know, thrilled that, you know, she's not all in one piece, there's kind of, but it's the imperfections, I think, that, you know, really jump out there, that stick. This is another way to show motion. Um, this was a composite shot. This is down in the skate park under the Manhattan Bridge. It's just a composite of shots. As you see there, there's nine images, and I just patched the nine images together. And again, it's always thinking how to create you know, an interesting shot. This, to me, is New, New Williamsburg. It's like hipsters. You, know, you have these fashionable hipsters, and then you have like the punk rocker, or did he just buy that jacket at like American Apparel or something for like $300? It's like stuff like that is interesting to me. You know? But I look at it, and I'm like, it's clearly on the Williamsburg Bridge. And it's captured New Williamsburg coming and going. You know, and shots like that where there's a juxt juxtaposition there that kind of all works together because you know, there's the contrast in the two, the, you know, the two sets of characters, but it's all one Williamsburg. This shot, I, I love it not only because of you know, just looking at it for aesthetic reasons. It's kind of like he's just walking into like this like trance. Um, but now the whole dynamic of the tunnel has changed, and you used to get those nice arches of light. Doesn't get any better that his shirt matches the color scheme. You have the arches, and then the patterns on his shirt. Preparation meeting luck is when you really get the, the best shots. Story time, you know, this is where you, you know, talk to people. You find out the stories. You know, I've dropped a couple stories on you today. It's like things that I remember that when I look through my photos, these are things that, you know, I've immersed myself you know, I've made it more of an experience where it's not like, hey, I'm just going out to take pictures. I'm really capturing my experiences in these neighborhoods. Um, now, we talked earlier, I said, you know, when you're not comfortable and I go into telephoto mode, most of the time it's better to go unplugged. Um, you shoot with your ears and your mouth. I can't tell you how many times I've been stopped by people who say nice camera or nice shoes. I got my, my trademark red sneakers on. Um, so something, you know, you know, but if I have my headphones in, I'm not listening to that. I don't hear that. I keep walking, and then they're just like, oh, he's rude. Um, there's also been times where I've eavesdropped on conversations. I know it's probably rude, but you know what? It's led to some great interactions. I was out in a torrential downpour a couple weeks ago, and there's two ladies talking on the street. It was one lady and, a male, and then a male lady talking, and the male lady was just so positive. She's like, eh, whatever, you know, what can I do? It's my job. And... I kind of just like butted in and made it made a joke, and next thing you know, all three of us are talking. And a lady who normally would have been shy and not opened up 
you know, opened up to me taking a portrait of her. And, you know, I told her, I was like, you know, you have a beautiful soul. You have a beautiful spirit. I can just see it. And she started glowing. And it's like, you know what? I probably made that lady's day, and I know she made my day. You know, it's experiences like that where if I had my headphones on and I just kept on walking, I don't hear that conversation. I don't interact. I don't open up. Any person who grew up in a Hispanic neighborhood, it's like when the weather gets nice, it's dominoes. Like, that's, that's something that, you know, captures the essence and you know I didn't even need to get the faces here it was all about the hands and the dominoes and I love weathered hands it's like you know you kind of can go to any neighborhood here and see the old guys playing dominoes this is in the South Bronx and what I loved about this shot is you know South Bronx it's like it's, anybody who's been in the South Bronx is like it's always a dirt bike or 10 or 30 or if you go out on Sundays there's about 400 of them and you see like the younger kids that are looking up to the older guys and they're riding their bikes and doing wheelies. And so here you had, you know, the older kid on the dirt bike and the younger kid practicing his wheelies on a, a pedal bike. And I just thought it was kind of like a cool shot looking at like, you know, the kids and, and their, their mentors and their idols. This is the, from the same, pretty much the same scene. It was down in the South Bronx when all the dirt bikes are out. And you have the young kids come out on their pedal bikes and line up and watch all the dirt bikes go by and wheelie. And, I thought this, you know, was a cool shot just because you see them just lined up. It's, it's almost like, you know, they're looking up like these are their sports figures. These are their athletes. These are the kids from their blocks that they're looking at and they're idolizing, you know, that they want to grow up and ride the dirt bikes just like them. Now, anybody who has worked in sales knows that sales is 80% listening and 20% talking. On the streets, it's the opposite. It's 80% talking, 20% listening because I don't want to give somebody a chance to question me or say no, I just want their picture. So I'm going to tell you my name, who I am, what I'm doing, why I stopped you, and then I'm going to throw you a compliment. Now, if you turn me down after that, you're a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> I was polite. I told you how beautiful you look or how, you know, how nice your vest is. Most people don't turn me down. And when they do turn me down, I always hit them with the, how about this? You know, because people always say, oh, I don't like pictures. And I'll tell them, how about this? Give me one shot. I'll take one picture of you. And if you don't like it, you can erase it. Never had anybody ask me to erase a shot. Um, the other one people use is that they're in a rush and they have a meeting. And I'm like, all right, here, I'll walk with you. And <laughs> it's like, you know, and it's going to be quick. You know? Now, a lot of that comes down to having the confidence. You look at the approach and the confidence from whence it came. When I first started shooting people on the street, my ultimate nightmare was, great, I stopped somebody, they agreed to have me take their portrait, and what if my picture sucks? So a lot of it is born from confidence. You want to have the confidence so that when you show them that image, if they even care enough to see it, you want them to be like, wow, can you send that to me? Even though they're not going to email you, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but it's all about confidence. It's about having that, you know, knowing that you can back it up. Why did you lift your camera and what does your photo say? Does your photo say something, or is it just about the aesthetics? And I don't think every photo has to say something. You could have just liked how that building looked and took a picture of it. You know, street photography is free-flowing. It's whatever you want to make it. It's an, it's an art form. Again, I, I, you know, always get asked, did you stage this shot? And no, I didn't stage the shot, but no, I didn't see the shot originally either. I was out shooting with someone, and he pointed it out. And I was totally embarrassed the fact that I didn't see it, because I'm like, I, such an ego with like, oh, I saw it, and I got the shot. And, my friend was like, and he, I'm like, what? he's like, I turn, I'm like, and I grab it, and it turns out that the guy's like, I live around the corner from here, and I've always wanted a shot like this, and I'm like, does he just like go there and sit like, like, it's totally confused, like, I didn't ask questions, and I sent it to him, and he loved the shot, and he posted the shot on Instagram, and I'm like, I'm not even going to ask questions, but it was like life imitating art, it was kind of cool, it was like, he has the exact same dog that's in the Bradley Theodore graffiti piece. Well, you guys are a wonderful audience. I hope I at least motivated you. Thank you so much for your time. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.